Hello, good people, and welcome to We Are The New Normal. Who is we? We is you, me, anyone who happens to live their everyday life having to survive and thrive with a compromised mental health. Um, it can be anyone. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't choose by race or religion or gender or economic status, level of success. It doesn't matter. Um, people across the globe are suffering every single day. And the reason why I say that we are the new normal is because in the United States right now, the rate is at about one in five people who suffer from mental illness. Um, and we can imagine that it probably is more because not everyone reports it. So I'm sure there's a, a larger number of people who suffer and it's actually unreported. So we are the new normal. We are the majority of people existing in this world today. And unfortunately, we're not quite sure how to navigate this world with the added challenge that we have. So that is what I'm here to do and to help you with. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is Sam and at 17, I myself was diagnosed with depression, bipolar, uh, social anxiety, um, and it was all due to a traumatic event. Um, at that age, both of my parents fell ill at the same time and for me that was a bit much. Um, we were struggling financially as a family. Um, a lot of the things that I was going through as a senior in high school, I didn't really get to experience the way that my other friends did because of my, both of my parents being sick. So I do believe that the depression was there and it was dormant and that traumatic uh, event actually kicked things off. So at 17, uh, firstly because in our community, it wasn't really talked about. In the black community, it wasn't discussed. Um, mental illness, mental wellness was not discussed. It was taboo. It was just unknown and not discussed and hidden and shamed. So at that age, I found myself having to navigate this whole system alone. In addition to the fact that my parents both were not from this country, they are from Trinidad and Tobago, and they themselves could not help me navigate this system to get me the help that I needed so I did it all on my own um, from finding doctors to finding insurance to making it to doctor's appointments um, to finding therapists to trying different cocktails of medications until things worked I went through the entire process on my own and came up with all of this on my own so I feel like my journey has allowed me to amass a lot of information that honestly at the time, if someone told me then what I know now, I think that my journey would be totally different. So I believe that that's what the purpose of this channel will be, um, is for everyone's general mental wellness with a focus on those people who happen to suffer daily with a mental illness. Um, I don't really like to even call it a mental illness because a lot of times people who have this mental challenge are heightened and excel in other areas and this may just be their challenge. Um, so first of all, this is a non-judgmental zone. Um, I've heard and been through everything and there's nothing that anyone can share with me that will shock me or shame me or hopefully not shame you. And this is just a zone where you can get information that will help you navigate this uh, crazy world and be successful and thrive and also a place where you can share with me things that concern you and get an open, honest, compassionate, empathetic word of advice from someone who can relate. That was kind of a problem when I was going through my issue. My parents and my friends genuinely wanted to help. Um, they genuine, genuinely wanted to see me happy. However, it's difficult when you haven't experienced it to really know what someone is going through to therefore give them what they need so i feel like i can be that for you um, i can relate to the different and specific challenges that come with dealing with the mental issues that you have and helping you overcome it and still have a good life and still thrive and still have girlfriends and still get married and still travel and just enjoy life even though this is an added challenge so let's just start with my first lesson um, something that I think is major if you can master it and that is simply mind control 
Um, many times my mother told me, you know what, you just have to think positive. And you do. That's the simple explanation, just think positive. But as you and I know, when you are in the midst, in the depths of the darkness, it's really hard for you to come up with any type of positive thought at all. So this is how I get through overcoming being down and having to get back up. And what I have found is that the key is mastering your mind. Um, and the way that you can begin to master your mind, um, first, first tidbit of information would be, if you can't change your mind, change your position. A lot of times, like I said, when you're in the midst of, of your trauma, um, your challenge, it's hard to just think positive. Like, it's hard to come up with a thought that's gonna propel you out of where you're at to something better. It's almost impossible. I've been through this for years and I still find it quite difficult when I'm in the midst of my difficulty to just have a positive thought just pop into my head. So in those times when I cannot come up with a positive thought, I take positive action. Um, in my attempt to get over a traumatic event, the last thing that happened to me, I had a terrible, terrible breakup. And the breakup, it devastated me. Emotionally, it devastated me. It made me question myself. It made me question my worth. It made me question just humanity. Are people just inherently bad? It, it just got that deep. So when I couldn't get my thoughts together in a way that would be productive for me, I just made a pact with myself. When I began to cry and when I began to get down, I said, I'm going to exercise. So I would walk and I was lucky that I had a treadmill in my house. So it sometimes you'd hear that treadmill going at 3 a.m. Sometimes you'd hear it going at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't working, so I had enough time to be at home and sulk and, and just lose myself in the darkness. So instead of, I knew I couldn't come up with anything positive at the time because my mind was consumed with grief and anger and bitterness. So when I couldn't think of anything positive, I just moved. And in moving, it allowed me at first to just change my focus. So the thoughts weren't necessarily negative, they just weren't there. And then it moved from not having negative thoughts to seeing physical results from me constantly exercising and feeling better about myself and realizing that life goes on and realizing that there is always a way to combat what you're going through. So mind control. Um, being able to use your mind as the tool that it was meant to be. Train your mind to serve you. It is a tool, like your arms, like your legs, um, like your heart has a function, like your lungs have a function, your brain has a function. You are not your brain. You can talk to your brain. You can lie to your brain, you can tell it the truth, but it doesn't matter what you tell your brain. Your brain is programmed to try to make your theory the truth. So you can begin to control your thoughts when you first learn to control your emotions. Um, when you have an event that happens to you, everyone says it's, you know, it's not what happens to you, it's how you react to it. And that's very true. But to explain more deeply how that really occurs, you have an event, um, you think something about it, that thought creates how you feel about it and then how you feel about it then affects what you do about it and then what you do about it creates your results after that situation so what you need to try to do is catch that first thought the event is going to happen what are you going to think about that event it could be the worst thing that happens to you or could end up being the best thing that happens to you and if you look back in life a lot of times you can see that um, troubled endings often are disguised, no, excuse me, good beginnings are, are disguised as troubled endings. So 
if you look at it as there has to be some benefit to me going through what I'm going through. Pain is always a good indicator that things need to change. So if you are going through something that is painful, that's good. That's gonna show you what you need to work on. That's going to change your focus away from everything else, makes you concentrate on the pain. And when you concentrate on it, you can attack it and get rid of it. Anything that you resist persists. If you choose to ignore it, or if you choose to just constantly wallow in it, that's where you're gonna be. But if you choose to look at a negative situation as a way to determine things that need to be changed, then your outcome will be different. So let me just give you a, a brief example. Let's say you get evicted. Um, you get evicted Monday morning. Now, first of all, don't act surprised. By law, you have to get notices prior to being evicted. So let's say Monday morning you get evicted. The feeling that you had is, oh my God, this is the worst thing. Where am I gonna live? I love this place. Now my credit is jacked. I'm never gonna find a place, I, blah, blah, blah. Everything negative that you can think of. But let's look at it this way. Instead of thinking that it's the worst thing that happens to you, that event will remind you that number one, you had warning. You had warning that your finances weren't in order. You had warning that maybe the relationship that you had with the person who was living in that apartment was dysfunctional. Maybe that's what got you evicted, that you guys were loud and argued and things like that. If it was the money that got you evicted, once again, you had warning that your finances weren't in order. Um, whatever it is, you ignored it. And it brought you to the point where you were evicted. So now you are faced to confront it. You are faced, you are forced to face it. So that's a good thing. You should say at this point, you know what? I had 50 times to pay this rent on time and I chose to go to the movies. I chose to buy that new outfit. I chose the party and I chose pleasure at that moment over discipline to do what I needed to do. At that time you had fun, now you're paying for it. It's a sign. It's just a way of showing you that you have to pay attention to these things that you've ignored. So, okay, so now you've got evicted. So now you say, you know what? I hate how this feels and I don't want this ever to happen to me again. So I'm going to get my finances in order. When you feel like that, then you feel like, you know what? I'm going to do this. It creates a positive emotion. I can do this. I'm going to change this. This is not going to happen to me again. I'm about to step my game up. When you have a positive emotion connected to that, then the action that you take is going to be positive. If you take positive action, what kind of results are you going to have? positive results and then you take that and you feed it back into the chain and it multiplies but if you start in the beginning with a bad negative thought it creates a negative emotion which creates a, a negative feeling which gives you negative action or lack thereof which gives you no positive results so it is that chain of thinking that occurs when people say you need to think positive you need to think positive back here so that your results over here benefit you so to recap to be able to control your thoughts control how you feel about the situation control your emotions connected with that situation and be smart enough to know that usually the things that are painful are the good things that you need to welcome because it is a definite indication that something needs to be changed and you have to believe that no matter with what challenge you are presented you have what you need to conquer that and come out better on the other side so if you control how you feel about a situ certain situation it will can help you control your thought about that situation which then controls your actions which then controls your results so it's it's something that takes practice um, and the more you practice it when you're in a good mood the easier it will be when you're in a bad mood so for example when things are going great for example today is awesome i love the sunshine i'm sweating i love it it's wonderful i would go outside today and just say thank you for this wonderful day get used to being grateful get used to looking at the positive in every situation and it may sound corny but there really is something good in everything 
So you get outside and you say, you know what, it's a wonderful day. It feels so good. I'm so thankful for this beautiful day. Now, it could be a load of manure in my backyard that I could be smelling, but you know what, the sun is shining. I'm gonna focus on the sunshine and not the manure. If you practice doing that when things are good, it will be so much easier and more like second nature when things get difficult. So I hope that's a word of wisdom that can help you begin to navigate things in a different way. Um, just remember that you are not your mind. Your mind is a tool to be controlled by you to help you benefit. Even if it is compromised, it can be trained. Even if you feel like it don't work and it's broken, you can fix it. You have that ability. So my last little gem that I would like to drop on you is just a quote from Robin S. Sharma. And it says that the mind is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. Let that melt on your mind. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Hopefully my journey, my experiences and my wisdom can help this be an enjoyable process one in which you can thrive and not just exist once again thank you so much for tuning in tune in every monday where i will bring the best of what i have in my brain to you um, by all means please subscribe to the channel share it if it's helped you hopefully it will help someone else and i look forward to seeing you all back here next time you are good people have a good life